Now, Leo is my uh, counterpart or my co-host um, as well. So, Leo um, will be monitoring the questions. So, if you have any um, questions or anything like that, please feel free to write those in the chat box. We'll be more than happy to um, read them off. I'll answer them. But today is a, a real simple, basic class on how to set up your social media. Excuse me. So uh, with that said, let's get started. We are transcribing. Hopefully you guys can see the transcript um, and things like that. But we're going to have a lot of uh, fun information to go over today. Um, basically, um, real quickly, how many of you have uh, a Facebook business page or a YouTube channel? And you can just give me a quick show of hands. And I don't see anybody raising their hands, so that means uh, nobody here has a Facebook business page. Okay, good. So we're just going to go over how to create that for you, how to set it up properly so that you're DRE compliant with the DRE rules and regulations. And um, we'll go over some some things like, you know, how to post on these platforms and uh, some of the benefits of having a Facebook business page. And of course how to set up your YouTube channel and some basic settings like that. Today's afternoon class at three o'clock, we'll go over what they, what I like to call the game plan, how to come up with social media content to be able to post on a regular basis, how often you should be posting things, uh, whether it's video content or straight up written or typed content or picture content, uh, type of content to post. And, uh, things like that, that I think are beneficial for you as an agent to show consistency, to start making this traction and social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever, uh, a little bit more successful, okay? So with that said, uh, again, quick introduction. My name is Anthony. I work here at Orange County Realtors, been here now for almost 20 years. <laughs> so started off in the MLS department, so I know guaranteed I'll speak to everybody regarding rules, regulations, violations, all that fun stuff. What I'm also involved with is our outreach program. Our outreach program is designed to give you tool training on all your tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, how to run searches, how to modify listings, creating CMAs, all that fun stuff, but I also, as well as Leo, are ZipForm certified trainers. So we give trainings on how to put together your transactions electronically to take advantage of your free CAR member benefit. We show you how to digitally sign contracts, whether it's within the ZipForms platform or other platforms. And of course, we love to show you how to utilize uh, ZipForms advanced tools to better have a better business and real estate experience. And on top of that, we also love showing technology. I and Leo um, love showing real estate agents how they can utilize their technology tools like their tablets or phone devices, whatever, to be able to still do the things that they need to do for real estate. Whether it's accessing MLS on your phone device, whether it's accessing zip forms on your phone or tablet device or electronic listing presentations, our job is to hope you, hopefully get you to be a paperless agent. Now, usually what I mean by paperless is maybe not get rid of paper fully because Lord knows I just printed out a whole stack of emails here for my job to to do some things or projects, but maybe get rid of enough paper in your day-to-day -day life to make your lives a lot easier. And that's where Leo and I and our outreach team come into play, okay? All right, so you're here. You're wanting to know how do you can utilize social media? Why should anybody use social media? seeing how social media is such a big thing in the news. We've all heard, uh, what is it, the Twitter uh, you know, fiasco with Elon Musk and the chat bots and all this other stuff. What, what's the real benefit of social media? Why Facebook? Well, number one, Facebook is the largest social media network in the world. Now, I just, before class, went online to see the number of active users for 2022 and Facebook now has officially more than 
3.6 billion users worldwide. And let me get this to sink in. Now, when I was in school, the largest country in the world at 1.4 billion people in a country was China. So Facebook, if we were to make Facebook a country today, it'd be the largest country in the world with 2.936 billion people. Now, I will tell you that this number is up from last year. Last year, it was at 2.74. So now we have grown by almost a billion people inside of a year on the Facebook users. Now, 63% of Americans today go on to Facebook each and every day. 93% of consumers go online before they list or buy a property, just so you know. So we're going to relate this to real estate. We've all experienced this, right? Our clients today go online. They go to utilize these third-party websites, Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, Homes and Garden, OC Register, LA Times, to begin their searching process. Social media is part of this. 62% of millennials, today's clients, actually were surveyed by NER, said that they found on social media their agent and actually went with that agent. Now, when the next question by NAR was, why did you go with that agent when you found them on social media? Their number one reason said was that they felt that they actually got to know the agent personally because they actually got to see their social, social media. They saw who they were as a person to feel comfortable and become a trusted person. Not just a trusted agent, but a trusted person. So those of you who don't even have a social media presence, Maybe you've activated or went onto Facebook, but you only post once or twice a year, right? And then you go, well, geez, how can really social media work for me? Well, the millennials who are today's clients, right? The millennials are the 40 and 40 years to 20 year generation. They're the ones that are buying and selling properties. They're the ones that may be getting something for their parents to, to downsize or upsize or whatever to now have that communal living, they're the ones that are buying and selling homes today. So why not go to the places and be at the places to be able to communicate and relate to these clients? This is why we need to have a social media presence. Now, real quickly, for Facebook marketing, okay, for realtors, 91% of realtors actually use social media to market themselves. Now, we've all have probably have heard the, the thing called the Facebook ads, right? Well, Facebook targeted ads rank number seven for realtors, for real estate, with an average click-through rate, meaning that somebody actually clicked on the ad at 0.99%. So less than 1% of consumers actually click on an ad. But this ranks number seven. The number one, uh, ad is automotive, uh, automotive ads with a click-through rate at 1.07%. 1.07. Mathematically, statistically, that's not a lot. Between 0.99 and 0.10 or 1.07, there's not a big difference. And nowadays, consumers are understanding that real estate is a good place to have your money. So nowadays, this is going to grow. Now, why is this so appealing for real estate agents? Well, a Facebook targeted ad for real estate costs about an average of $1.81 per click. Now, let's put that into relation uh, reason here. Does anybody do mail marketing like you do postcards? Douglas, Kathy, Nancy, Raymond, anybody? Oh, good. I see one person raise their hand. Excellent. Okay. Now, I'm just going to ask real quickly, how much does it cost you for, say, 500 postcards on average? Probably, what, $500 a month? So if we think about 
having the postcard printed, designed, emailed, or mailed, you're probably looking at about maybe $600 a month. Now, you go out, you send that out. How many people actually respond to that postcard right away? I'm 100% online with my marketing efforts. Oh, that's great. But I am considering blending hard copy mailers with online. Hey, Raymond, that's great. Have multiple pipelines for your business. That's wise for any business. You know, most successful businesses have at least five different pipelines of where they're grabbing business from, whether it's social media marketing, mail marketing, door knocking, open houses, or even uh, gener uh, lead generation websites. That's all part of your financial and business plan. If you're getting business from these five areas, you evaluate those every six months because where is your marketing dollars going to go? Maybe one starts to dry up a little bit. So you pull the marketing dollars out of one and funnel it into another. That's wise. That's smart. You can't just depend on one thing for one, one area of business because when it goes south, what are you going to do? Right? We want to have those backups, those redundant systems. But with mail marketing, you're talking about about $600 for 500 postcards to go out. Now, you may not get responses right away. So now all of a sudden, you got to send another $600 worth of postcards the next month and the next month and the next month. On average, from mail marketing alone, a turnaround time of information where you see a return on your investment is about uh, nine, nine to 14 months. Nine to 14 months before someone really responds back to you on your mail, mail marketing. So if we t take that nine times, oh, let's just make it 500 a month, okay? That's $4,500 you've just spent to make one lead to make one lead. Whereas here on Facebook, I could spend $100 for a Facebook targeted ad to run a two week ad. And now all of a sudden I can see that I can hit over a thousand people possibly, right? Where they see the ad. Out of those thousand people, I might get about a hundred people that actually clicked on the ad. So I get to see you know, hey, that ad is making a difference. People are actually looking at it. And out of those maybe 100 people, I might get anywhere from five to 10 leads. And that's just in one month. Out of those five or 10 leads, if I convert maybe what, two or three, that's a significant amount of return on my investment. And if that cost me $100 to 1,000 people, I've spent less than about a, a dollar per person. All for a two-week two $100 ad. My return on investment from a Facebook targeted ad is far substantial and quicker. Because why? People are always online. Now, 62% are marketers because of that huge return on investment. Actually say Facebook is the most important of all social media platforms to advertise on. Goes to show, this is why 2.9 billion people belong to Facebook. It's not just for uh, for the average Joe Schmo, but it's for consumers and of course businesses. Now let's bring it to YouTube real quickly. Some mind blowing facts about YouTube. As it stands today, more than 2.6 billion people go on to YouTube each and every day, or I'm sorry, belong to YouTube. More than 30 million visitors go on YouTube every day. YouTube is the second largest search engine compared to a Google search. Now, funny enough, Google owns not just the Google search platform, which is number one, but they also now, they also own YouTube. So Google owns the first and second largest search engines worldwide. Now, with 2.6 billion unique users using YouTube, that makes YouTube the second largest social media platform. 
everybody goes, well, what about TikTok? What about Instagram? Instagram is actually third. And funny enough, Facebook owns Instagram. Now, with when it comes to videos, 5 billion videos are watched every single day by 30 million viewers. More than 500 hours of video are uploaded every minute to every day. 1 billion hours of video are watched on YouTube. More than 10,000 videos have actually generated over 1 billion views. What does that say? YouTube is now the new boob tube of the world. Anybody remember that term boob tube? Cassie, you might you might remember it, right? Leo, what was what was boob tube called back well, in our day? That was um, just a television. That's all it was. That's right. Mom and dad back in the you know the 60s, 70s, 80s could sit Leo and I down with a bowl of cereal on a Saturday morning, right? And mom and dad could sleep until 11 or 12. Why? Because Morning cartoons were on on Saturday. We had our bowl of cereal. We didn't need to interact. We never went out. Maybe even mom and dad left us for the night and didn't leave a babysitter. Why? Because they sat us in front of the TV with our TV dinner. Nowadays, because of our mobile devices, videos are watched constantly. I know everybody here has at least gone to YouTube at least once to learn how to do something, whether it was to learn a program whether it was to write a contract, whether it was a class, or maybe some household item that you wanted to fix, or better yet, a product review. Product reviews on, on, on YouTube are the most watched videos. And this is where this stat comes in. 70% of YouTube users who watched a video on a, on a product said that it helped them make a purchase decision. Because people are reviewing products and giving their honest opinions, whether it's good or bad. And that's going to help us determine whether we should get that product or not, or that brand. Now, 80% of YouTube users who watched a video that helped them make a purchase said that they started watching videos at the beginning of their shopping process. This is super true for real estate. Before somebody actually starts to buy real estate, they start watching videos on how to buy, what to look for, what to ask, what areas they should be living in. Hopefully, there are videos like that. Now, here's an astonishing fact that we don't have in this presentation, and that is in our MLS system, less than 15% of listings in the MLS have videos. They don't even have a virtual tour. So if you notice here that 70% of consumers said that they watched a video that helped them make a purchase, and yet in the MLS, there are less than 15% of listings that have a video on them, what are you as a real estate agent not doing? Anybody? Leo? You're not meeting the demands of the client. Clients and potential clients out there want to see videos about a product before they want to buy it. If you as a listing agent aren't doing a video or don't have a video of your listing, you're not going to get a lot of offers, especially now with the current change in our market. We need to start showing our consumers that we are out there making sure that we are giving the best and and highest quality marketing possible for people to want to view this home. And if I can and add that the great thing about videos is that sometimes they'll add details in the listing that's sometimes missed when taking photographs of different sections of the home. So mm -hmm. that way you get the first person view as someone walking into that home of that future new homeowner going to that property. Exactly. And it's not just making videos of homes. You as a, as a business should have videos out there about your knowledge and expertise about the business. Now, by the way, demographically, 7 out of 10 people prefer watching videos online versus watching t live TV. 
Nowadays, in order to watch live TV, you got to have what? Maybe Direct TV, Cox, uh, Dish Network, right? On average, how much is that per month? I want to say for at least 300 channels with a couple of, you know, HBO or Showtime or Cinemax or whatever, it's about what? $150 per year? Or I'm sorry, $150 per month? So $150 per month times 12 months, that's more than what? $3,600 in a year that you've spent in just TV. Whereas I watch YouTube or I watch videos online like YouTube, it's free. So $3,600 a year, free. Hmm. Almost a no-brainer. I can tell you, I got rid of my cable, my my uh, Direct TV. Looking at those costs more than five years ago, and now what do we do with that money? Well, you can put it in your marketing, you can put it to your house payment or your mortgage payment, or do a vacation. Because video is so easy to watch online, the only thing you need is internet. And what does internet cost you nowadays? Maybe seventy five dollars. Right. In an average month, eight out of 10, 18 to 49 year olds, basically the millennial group, watch YouTube for some reason, whether it's to watch movies, shows, or how to's or products. By 2025, they predict more than half the viewers under the age of 32, your kids, your grandkids, will no longer subscribe to paid TV services. They'll all be online. And look at it today, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, AMC Plus, uh, CBS, NBC, YouTube, Netflix, whatever. Far easier, far cheaper. Now, granted, everybody seems to be upping their fees. So now people are going to be more selective about what areas of programs they're going to go to. Heck, just even having Apple TV, that's less than $7 a month to get shows and movies. Now, mobile devices, more than 70% of YouTube views are all coming from a mobile device. You're there at a restaurant, watch. Kids are running around the, 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 the restaurant like crazy little monsters. What does mom and dad do? They whip out their phones. They whip out their tablet devices. They start playing a video, their favorite show. Kids sit down, get really quiet. During that quiet time, Mom and dad don't talk to each other. What does mom and dad do? They now whip out their own individual phones and watch their own individual shows. There we go. Everybody's watching their own thing nowadays, even in public rest restaurants. Anybody experience that? I know I do. Mobile users spend about, on average, about 40 minutes per session. Now, a session, if you don't know, I open up my phone and I swipe it on. On average, 40 minutes spent watching videos because we get sucked into watching TV. Our TV is constantly with us nowadays. How many of you have gone onto Facebook and you start seeing videos and you click on it? And what does it do? It doesn't give you a choice to, do you want to play the next one? It automatically plays. Has anybody ever got caught in that rabbit hole? Or the next video, and the next video, or the next video, and before you know it, you've spent two and a half hours. Instead of folding the laundry or wash, washing the dishes, you've sat there and watched a bazillion short five-minute videos on comedy or animals or, you know, people having accidents. Anybody ever see those? And you laugh at those people. You laugh at those situations. Now, when it comes to YouTube, they do have a monetization platform if you get so many users so many views now all of a sudden youtube will start to pay you as a user because you're a popular channel now here's something that's interesting we all notice that nowadays youtube has commercials people see that like these big companies see that people are spending more time on youtube right Anybody watch the, the Super Bowl this year? Did you watch it on TV? Or did you watch it on YouTube? 
if you watched it on TV, right, in the past, it was a big deal to have all these super high-end commercials on TV. But in the last two or three years, the high-end commercials have not been there. Where do you see those fancy $10 million plus commercials now? They're on YouTube. As a matter of fact, NFL got smart and started streaming on YouTube the Super Bowl. And now those commercial people or those commercials now find their way onto YouTube. Now, this generates income for YouTube. YouTube generates two times more income per year based on their advertising platform. They, in 2020, earned more than $3.8 billion in just commercial revenue. Now, you as a channel, if you produce videos that get high volume traffic and this, that, and the other, and a lot of people start to view them, YouTube will start putting commercials on your, on your videos in between, which you actually get paid for because you've got a thousand, excuse me, a thousand viewers and maybe generate, you know, more than a thousand views per video. Now, the highest income earner back in 2020 was a YouTube user who was eight years old. He earned more than $26 million in revenue from YouTube. His videos were product reviews. All he did, or his parents sat him in front of the camera, and he gave his opinion about whatever was bought, whether it was online, like through Amazon, or a toy that they bought, bought or whatever. The highest income earner was eight years old. The second highest earner was a five-year-old child doing the same videos, and they earned, or they they essentially earned $20 million. Now, do I expect you guys to be high income earners from your videos on YouTube? No. Does this mean that you now all of a sudden start um, making your children and your grandchildren work for you? No. But just know, here are these possibilities. An eight-year-old child now all of a sudden can afford a home here in Orange County. And he's now buying a home for his mom and dad. All right. Ways to market on Facebook real quickly. By the way, are there any questions so far? No? Anybody no astonished about this stuff? <laughs> it's I, I, astonishing, I, right? The eight-year-old, um, his name's Ryan, and uh, my stepson, he watches him. So it's very entertaining. So I could see how people get sucked in and watching it. Mm. It's very, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And he has products um, throughout Target. If you ever go Excellent. to Target, you'll see Ryan. Giving videos. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Where are the child labor laws for that? <laughs> All right. Ways to market on Facebook. You got three major tools that you can utilize. Number one is the pages tool. The pages tool is basically the Facebook business page. It's very similar to your personal page, but it's strictly for your business. Now, when you sign up for a Facebook account, your personal account, there's an agreement that you have to agree to that you are not going to be doing business solely through your personal account. Okay. Now, does this mean that you have to have a separate business account? No. There are agents that will actually create one for the business and business only. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's some disadvantages to this. What we're going to do today is that if you have a Facebook personal account, you are going to create your business account that's linked to your personal. Why? Because as I mentioned earlier, millennials want to get to know you as a person personally before trusting you with their business. So this is a way of being able to say, oh, you have a business which is part of who you are, but I want to get to know you as a person to see what you're like. So the biggest thing here is that instead of having friend requests through your business page, this is where the like comes into play. People will like your business if they like what they see, which will automatically send them, if they like your business page, automatic updates anytime you put anything or post anything to your business page. So they don't have to actively look for it. 
they're going to be automatically notified and given that information in their news feed automatically. The second way to market on Facebook, the targeted ad. This is their advertising platform. This is where you're going to be able to create targeted ads specific to geographic areas, income levels, education levels, interest, things like this to be able to target market information. That dollar and 81 cent uh, per click ad, the hundred dollar ad that you're creating to run a two week ad to receive either likes, gen, uh, lead gens or leads, whatever. Now this could get a little expensive depending on what your goal is, how many people you wanna hit, what regions you wanna hit, things like that. But for the most part, you know, it's pretty amazing for a set budget. The third thing is groups. Now, a group considered that a, a Facebook group is basically like being invited to an exclusive party. It's a discussion group. But instead of somebody else making a group, you're inviting people to your party. So even though you are the center of attention, you're bringing people of like mind together to have certain discussions. You can, you personally can bring up a topic or this is a great way of making other people, people that you know, connect with each other. And they go, how do you know, you know, how do you know, Tony? How do you know, Leo? And all of a sudden they have their own discussions. But you can have things like what's going on in the neighborhood. So you invite all your neighborhood people to be part of the neighborhood group. And now, hey, we've got a community here. Thanks, Tony, for bringing us all together. Otherwise, I would never have known Joe down the street or Sarah, you know, that's right next door. We have common interests. We have things going on. You are part of that. Now, by the way, these three tools here, two of these tools are absolutely free to use. That is the pages and the groups. Doesn't cost you a dime. Ads are the only thing that you will spend money on if you ever choose to use it. Now, YouTube for marketing, you're gonna be able to create videos to make yourself an image of authority. Your videos, your business videos are gonna have your views and ideas. You're gonna provide an aura of expertise based on your experience, right? Business tips and strategy videos will get attention by people because most people don't understand the buying and selling or leasing process of real estate. There should be agents that understand this process. And what makes a good agent or a great agent stand above a bad agent? Their knowledge. Now, building a, a, a um, you got to build credibility and trust. So you got to entice them with more than just the sales pitch. So not just do I do uh, virtual tours, but I got to entice people with just more than that. I got to be able to build rapport. Nowadays, with, when it comes to social media, people want to build that rapport. That's the whole point of what social media is all about, right? They want to have a connection with somebody. They don't need to have that personal connection, whether it's right next door or somebody that I grew up with, it's beyond that now. I want to build friendships across the world. Knowing that somebody has the same interests as I do in, say, Japan or France or Italy or in England is a big deal for people nowadays. Right? Well, no different here. Give the consumer a reason to evaluate your services on your products. Right? Credibility comes from information. Show that customer engagement. Maybe do videos or have your clients do video testimonials. Do I have anybody here today in escrow about to close escrow on a property? Any hands? Anybody doing any business right now showing clients? Okay, one person, excellent. Oh, Two another people, one. Yeah. good. Right? So what do you do? Here, Raymond, you 
go to close escrow or the day you close escrow, you go to the client to hand them their keys, pull out your phone. Hi, Bob. Hi, Sarah. If you don't mind, would you mind speaking on video for 30 seconds and just tell my audience what you thought about my services? And sit back and hit record. That 30 second long to one minute long video will convey more than 1.8 million words could ever convey on any written response or any written feedback. People are going to see their genuineness. They're going to see their happiness. They're going to see that satisfaction. Maybe, geez, Leo, thank you so much for helping my wife and I buy our very first home. You know, you hooked us up with such an amazing lender that we didn't think we could ever qualify to buy here in Laguna Hills because she had a 520 FICO score and I only had a 580 FICO score. And we never thought we could ever buy. Thank you so much for being a part of this and getting us our very first home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Raymond's thanking you for the great idea. Yeah, Raymond that's Denton. a great idea. Thank you, Raymond. So it's amazing what people can do, right? We said that in less than 30 seconds, but now all of a sudden, everybody here probably almost got the chills hearing something like that. Wouldn't you just love to hear that from your clients? Of course. And if consumers see that, on your YouTube channel, on your Facebook page, now all of a sudden, because they don't have to read it, and why? Because most people don't like to read, right? Boom, they've caught their attention. I want Leo as my agent. I want him to represent me in the sale or purchase of my next property because his clients are so happy with what they he did. And wow, he did something so unique that maybe my similar situation calls for that. And by the way, videos are way more engaging than the older forms of media, right? It's proven. If it takes nine to 14 months from a physical paper postcard to get a response or a return on my investment, videos are going to have way more engagement, way more eyes, views, likes, whatever. One important thing in any social media campaign if someone gives you feedback where they write a comment on a video or a post always write back always comment back it shows that you're obtainable it shows that you just don't put something out there and then ignore it you're actually monitoring it say if i wrote something on leo's facebook or video about wow that's so amazing I'd love to talk to you about my situation. Leo should respond, hey, that's great. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. Let's talk about this. Or maybe he did an instructional video where he gave me three tips that I need to do to be able to prepare to sell my home. And I say, hey, I did the three. What's the next step? Maybe in that comment, Leo gives me step four. But then he now says, you know what? Based on your, you know, depending on your situation, step five through 10 may be a little different. Why don't you give me a call and you and I can sit down and have a discussion about what the next particulars are? Clients are going to see that Leo is responsive. Cl clients or other potential clients are going to see he's willing to go that next step, but he is now going to make sure that this person's needs specifically are taken care of. That's where the comments come in. That's where that feedback comes in and why it's important to always monitor that. All right. Are there any questions on any of this so far? Sounds pretty simple. So now what do we do? Well, let's create a Facebook business page. Okay. It's very easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to be in Facebook. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Facebook. To our personal page. How do we create a business page from here? Well, what we're going to simply do is we're going to come over here to the left hand side of the screen. We've got a bunch of choices here, a bunch of things that we can do. Now, usually I get to see a choice here to the left that says pages. When I click on pages, I'm now given a list of all my created pages that I've created. 
Now, by the way, this is all free. I can create as many pages as I want for the multiple businesses. So some of you here may, today might have a lending company as well as a real estate company, as well as a bakery, as well as a dog walking company. Well, guess what? Create as many bit business pages as you want for your various different businesses. But most of us here are real estate agents, so we're all going to need one page. Simply over here, back to the left, we're going to click on create a new page. Now we're going to put in some information here to the left because we see what the page is going to begin to look like. First, we need to name it. Now, naming our Facebook business page is vital. This is where we now need to be DRE compliant. Now, does anybody know what the DRE regulations are for first point of contact? Anyone? Raymond, I see that your hand is up. Do you know? No? Okay. Well, if you don't know, not a problem. Let's go to the DRE website. So dre.ca.gov. From here to the top right side, we're going to click on the search and we're going to type in advertising. When we type in advertising, we're getting out a bunch of results. And here we've got the most updated article, or we should, back in 2020 of the new advertising guidelines as set forth by DRE. When we click on this here, we're going to now see all the necessary guidelines for advertising properly that we need to perform to be compliant with DRE regulations. Now, on page seven, and why do I know this? Because I go here very often when I teach this class. Page seven specifically talks about team names or what's required on first point of contact. Typically, what's required, it must include the surname of the team or the agent's name. It must have the license number of that agent or of that team member. It must require the team name itself, like ending in group, team, or associates. And it, then it must include the broker's name, not their logo, but their name. So here we see at the very top here, we've got the Island team. Jay Island is the agent their DRE license number, who is part of Hopkins Realty, as set forth on DRE. Not um, like some abbreviations, like some companies have, like Realty One. Some people will go ROG, right? Or Realty One Group, and they type real uh, ROG, thinking that that's the business name. That's not the licensed business name of that company. Okay. So here are the, are the, requirements of first point of contact. Now, if you're not part of the team, then guess what? We don't include the team name. Then we've got me as the agent, my DRE license number, and of course the company that I work with. Now, this is required on all first point of contact. Now, what is considered first point of contact? Well, first point of contact is not just printed material anymore. Because of social media, and the internet is now required on every social media post. So every post that you post out must meet all first point of or all first point of contact requirements by DRE. DRE has a dedicated team going through every real estate agent social media post looking for non-compliant postings. The fine by DRE is $2,400 per post violation. I have known one agent to get five violations for five posts from DRE, totaling more than $10,000 in fines. So how does this relate to our Facebook business page name? Well, I'm going to help you be compliant with DRE regulations with at least two of the three requirements. That will be under the business page name, what I would suggest, put in your name, 
comma, if you're a realtor, put in the realtor, space, number sign, and then your DRE license number. Now, whenever we go to create a post on our business page, we've at least met two of the three requirements. So how do we add that third requirement? Well, when we go to create a post on our uh, Facebook business page, we're always going to begin the post with the company name. So maybe I belong to Jack and Joe Real Estate. So every post will sit, begin with Jack and Joe Real Estate space dash, and then I'm going to write my post. Now, when I submit the post, it will say on the post, Anthony Breed, comma, realtor, my DRE license number. Then it will say Jack and Jill Real Estate. And then whatever the post is. So now I've met all three requirements by DRE. The reason why I don't put in my company name here in the name of the post. Is that. This will get cut off because when I create a post, the business page name or the title cuts off after so many characters. Which now, even though I've named the business page all three elements, the post itself doesn't have all three. Which now means I'm non compliant. Number two, if I left Jack and Jill Real Estate and went over to ABC Real Estate, I can only change the business page name twice, ever. Anything above and beyond the two, I now have to create a brand new business page. So if I leave the company name out of the post, that's perfect. Why? Because I'm not going to change my DRE license number, and I'm obviously not changing my name necessarily. So these two remain constant. So now at this point, when I create the post, even if I were to change a change companies, then I'm only going to change the beginning of every post. So instead of my next post being Jack and Joe Realty, instead now my new post, because I'm at a new company, it'll be ABC Realty. So in a way, my string of posts will show my progression from going from one company to another without having to change or fix my business page. Anybody like that? Anybody have any questions on the business page name? Uh, Raymond, I see that your hand is up. Is It's been up for the entire time. Do you have a question at this time? I guess the answer is possibly no. Oh, wait. Oh, I prefer to name the page after my farm area. Okay. Raymond, you will be in trouble with the DRE. I guarantee you. Don't do that. Number one, are you the owner of the farm? Probably not. And you're doing business as a real, real estate agent. So DRE now says if you're doing business as a real estate agent, you need to meet first point of contact. If you're not the broker owner of that farm, which should be a company at that point, then you're now misleading the public, which is now another DRE as well as code of ethics violation and MLS violation. So your fines are now all of a sudden stacking up. So make sure that your business page is named properly. Because the last thing I want to see you, anybody here get hit with are violations from DRE. Because if it gets too bad, they will get rid of your license. They will suspend it. How can any one of us own a farm? Exactly. You can't. So if you name the business page the farm, it's going to be assumed that that farm name is a name of a company. Which now, are you a broker? And if under your broker's license, that's not a licensed DBA? You're now misleading the public. And again, it still has to have your DRE license number on it. How about if I have a registered DBA? 
Sure. If you want to have an official company by that, but you still then need to have the DRE license number on it. Then that's fine. <laughs> if you want to make a company the Seacrest Realty, then by all means do so. But make sure that Seacrest Realty has the DRE license number on it. That's all I ask. <laughs> you know, I can't control what DRE does, but I just know, speaking with their attorney one time, that we talked about those types of scenarios. Now, by the way, back over here under create your page to the right hand side or left hand side, the category. This is where we're going to have a little fun here. Obviously, real estate, right? Also, real estate agent and maybe realty nope uh, but here we can start typing in at least real estate and real estate agent so if anybody goes to look for a business under real estate or trying to look for a real estate agent my page is going to get referenced in a search even in a google search down below here, describe your business. Now, unlike some uh, 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 profiles where you have almost unlimited characters, Facebook limits you to 255 characters. But be unique in your description of your business. Make it stand out. Okay. From here, down below, Click on create your page. Now, once you create the page, a couple of things here that we're going to do. We're still not done setting up our business page just yet. Once we hit create a page, now we've got to do a couple of extra things here before we make it live and active and found. Number one. Your profile picture. Right next to where it says your business page name, click on the little picture icon or the camera icon and edit your profile picture. I highly recommend, and I know a lot of agents go, well, I don't like the way I look on camera. Do you have your professional picture on your business card? Then put it on your Facebook business page. You want people to associate the name with the face. So put your, your picture here. Now, by the way, advisable for any marketing, always update your profile picture on all your marketing materials, including your business cards, at least every five years. We all go through changes. Some of us obviously get older, right? We get gray, we lose hair, we gain hair, we gain weight, we lose weight. I can't tell you how many agents that I know that still use their profile pictures from, from about 40 years ago. I actually had an agent not too long ago um, complain that their clients weren't calling them back. And I said, well, why not? They said, well, they don't, they say that they don't recognize me. Well, I pulled up their profile and here was a lovely black and white photo of that person. And I said, is this you today? And she goes, well, that was when I was back in high school. I go, how long was that? About 40 years ago. Well, do you look the same? Well, not really. Of course not. Well, no wonder they're not calling you. They don't recognize you versus what you're sending them through your social media. Update that profile picture. Well, that's when I looked my best. This is, did you meet them? Yes. Do you look like that now? No, that's why. Most importantly here at this point, your background image. Now, this is where we need to be super, super careful. I know some agents here will say, well, I'm just going to put a picture of a house. Okay, whose house? Well, one of my clients. Is it a current client? No. It's a past client. Okay, well, what gives you the right to use their home in your marketing material? Did they give you the rights to do that? No. Not necessarily. Well, now we're all of a sudden in copyright infringement. 
Or maybe you took a picture that you found her in Google and you want to upload it here. Well, now, because I'm trying to gain business and monetary value based on this photo, I now owe money to Google, which again, if Google didn't give me those permissions, I'm in copyright violation. This is where I would suggest your background image be almost reflectant of your business card. As a matter of fact, I'd almost make a photocopy of your business card. Or maybe you have an electronic JPEG file of your business card. Well, what's nice about that? Number one, it's got your personal logo on it. Number two, it's got all your first point of contact information, right? Your name, your GRE license number, a phone number, an email address, your broker's name or the company's name, as well as maybe the broker's license number. What's nice about this is that at a quick glance, whether it's a Google search or a Facebook search for this business, it's a quick right away identifier of who you are, what company you work for, and your information. So I would suggest that your background image be your, your electronic business card. Have your personal logo, great. Have your company logo, which is about the same size as your personal logo. Have your phone number, your email address, and of course, obviously, your DRE license number. That way, DRE can't say that they couldn't identify that you were an agent right out of the gate. Not to mention, we don't care about the post right away, but just know right here is the background image is an immediate identifier. So profile picture, background image, step two. Step three, over here, back to the right, settings. Several settings we're going to set up right away before we publish our business page. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in here if I can, just a little bit on this. Okay, number one, age restrictions. Do you want any information available to the public or any information you post on your business page available to anybody over the age of 17, 18, 19, or 21 or alcohol-related uh, people, basically 21 and older? Usually, I'd like to leave it at public. Why? Because things that you're posting is not necessarily always age-restricted, right? Maybe there's you know, a special Disney day for kids. Well, you want your clients and their clients' kids to find out about it. Because that way the, the kids can now tell their parents, hey, I saw on Facebook today that there's a Disney day tomorrow. Mom, Dad, can we go to Disney? It's half off. Oh, where'd you hear that from? Oh, I was on Facebook and I saw that Tony had posted something about that about that day. Oh, that's great. Right? So maybe you leave the age restriction to public. Here, content moderation, you definitely wanna monitor the content. Maybe you upload a list of words that you do not want posted as comments or any other thing on your Facebook business page, which leads us to profanity. Turn on that profanity meter. Now, most of us who have been around social media have noticed this little group called the trollers. Now, the trollers are people that love going onto people's social media networks and love causing arguments. They love picking fights. They love antagonizing people. And they will write the, the most outrageous content out there. So. This means that I am now conducting, if I turn on this meter, operating under a certain code of conduct. What I will not tolerate in postings on my post. As a matter of fact, turning on this profanity meter even prevents me from writing inappropriate language. Curse words, things like that. So now I'm maintaining a level of professionalism that a lot of businesses forget about doing today. Turn that on. Um, 
translate automatically? Because 2.9 billion people are worldwide. Not everybody speaks English. Here in even California, I know agents that set up their computers to display information in their native language, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Farsi, whatever. Well, if I don't speak those languages, how do I get to those groups? Well, or groups of people. I take my business page. I now turn on this button, translate automatically. So now when they see a post from me or they find me, they go to find me, any content that I posted will now be automatically translated, whether it's typed information or a flyer to a point. Uh, actually, any information I type in a post will now be translated and easily viewable on their computer. When it comes to video, unless I do videos in, in languages, which I don't speak multiple languages, unfortunately, uh, the video is still in English, but at least the written words are now translated into the appropriate language for them to easily read and understand. Um, let's see here. Um, we can merge pages together. So if you had multiple business pages by mistake, you can now merge them together with other ones if you needed to that you own or created. And of course, maybe eventually, geez, Raymond, you decide, you know what? I'm going to hang up my, my realtor boots. I am retired. I no longer need this business page. Here under the settings, you can actually delete your page. Now, with the settings done, right? Go through these, look at these. Now, before we make this active, a couple of other things. Anybody here with Instagram? Because by the way, Instagram is owned by Facebook. Good, I see Kathy, Nancy, excellent. Geez, when it comes to posting, the last thing I wanna do is post to Facebook and then go back to Instagram and post to Instagram, right? Isn't that tedious? Isn't your day way busier than to do that? Of course. So let's make it a little easy for us. If I ever post on Instagram, I want my Facebook business page to see it. I, if I ever post on Facebook business page, I want my Instagram to see it. Well, guess what? Come down over here under the page settings, and we have a choice called Instagram. If I click on Instagram, I can now merge my Instagram account with my Facebook account. So now I can cross post. So if I post one, I can then share it immediately to the other and not have to do anything crazy. Now, the thing with Instagram is it doesn't like posted words, but that's not a problem. If I have a flyer, which is a JPEG file, if I have a video, easily those two types of things are shareable to Instagram. If I put something on Instagram, like the Instagram video or Instagram TV, I could then share that back to my Facebook business page. Why? Because I have the two linked. Here, the cross posting is great because now we can dictate and add the necessary pages here to cross post. Once I've modified my settings, where is it? Not my roles. There we go. Once I've done that, back here under the general settings, we're going to now go to where it says page visibility. Click on that, and now we're going to take it from page unpublished to then page published, and then save it. Once you've published it, you are now ready to do the other necessary things for your Facebook business page. And that is, number one, the requesting of the likes. We can add a post. So here... As I mentioned earlier, if I wanted to create a post, where's that button here? Maybe I'm missing it here. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah, am I missing it? I'm staring at the screen. 
Uh, let's. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. My normal view, I think. Uh, add a button, page tips, create an ad, insights. Oh, that's because I zoomed in. That's why. There we go. So here, when I go to create a post, you notice here that at the very top, it's got my business page name. So if we made Anthony Breed comma realtor with my DRE license number, now I go to write the post. I now type in Jack and Jill Realty space dash and then whatever the post is. Copy and paste the picture, add the photo, whatever. And then at the end of the day, I hit post. At which point now, I'll have met all my DRE requirements for my postings. Anybody like that? Any questions on that? I'm checking to see if there's any questions, giving time for our attendees to give time to type in anything mm -hmm. that they may question about but it looks pretty amazing and for a great price too yeah free <laughs> all right so now invite people to like your page typically invite your because we have it linked to our personal page we can immediately ask our friends who are personal friends of us to like our business now we only get one shot at this really okay one shot to make this really count. Okay. Let me jump in if I could. We have a question from Kathy. Kathy right. wants to know, can you put the DRE license number and the office name at the bottom of each post? Uh, you could. You could. But you kind of want those. But then you got to now remember to do that each and every time. Whereas if you did in the beginning, because you could do the DRE license number and the company name in the beginning of the post too. So there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's, it's somewhere on the post, you're fine. And it's easily found and picked up. What you, you know, and again, I don't like to have to type, especially my DRE license number, which is how many digits is the license number, Leo? It's eight, no, eight numbers long. Okay. It's eight numbers long. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I hate having to retype numbers and retype things over and over again. It's already tough enough. I have to now remember to type my company, but now to try to remember to type my DRE license number and my company again, and again, it gets a little tedious. That's why I kind of personally like having it as the business page name, because that's one constant that will never change. Just like my name should hopefully never change. And hopefully my realtor status never changes, right? If I'm not a realtor, obviously I'm not gonna call myself realtor, I might say real estate agent, but then we're now talking about spacing issues. Um, heck, I don't even think I have to indicate that I'm a realtor if I don't want to. Is that correct, Leo? That I would have to refer to CAR legal to be on the safe side. Well, that would be an NAR thing, but because that's a realtor or a realtor designation by NAR, not CAR. Oh. But I could just say Anthony Breed space and my DRE license number at that point. Because DRE says those two things are required, not indicating that you're a realtor or a real estate agent. Uh, does that mean Facebook doesn't uh, offer a preset signature feature like email provides? Um, you can email from your business page, um, which is totally different than the uh, posting. But yeah, I mean, that's where the business page name is kind of like your preset. But you could do one also for your email signature. Emails and postings are vastly different. Usually emails, you've already established a relationship. So you don't necessarily, I don't think, unless you're doing an email drip campaign, have to have your first point of contact on it. If I'm just emailing Leo, who happens to be my friend or my business colleague, well, he already has my information, hopefully, because I've already given it to him. So I could still end it with just Anthony or Tony, which is how I end my emails to my personal contacts. Now, by the way, what makes likes important? 
when someone likes your business page and you post something to your business page, then what's interesting with the likes is not only are the likes notified about your post, but it's almost like a ripple effect. People who haven't even liked you, if they're friends with the people that liked you, they personally are also notified. And if anything, those people, if they have friends, are also notified about your post. So when with one post, you could actually have this ripple effect that's organic. And what I mean is this. Say you get 500 people to like your business page. And each of those 500 people all had 500 friends. Now when I post something on my Facebook business page, I could potentially hit up to 175,000 people organically without having to boost, pay an advertiser or anything automatically will see my post. So 500 likes, each of those friends have 500 people and each of those friends are 500. That's a potential 175,000 people that could see one post by me without having to boost the post, without having to create a targeted advertising thing at all. So anybody here with 500 friends on Facebook, get them to like your business page. Because now you post that home that's up for sale. You post that open house. You post that video. You've now hit 175,000 people with just one post. Anybody wild about that? I'm just trying to think of a way to not having to manually enter in whatever posting is on the business page. Yeah, Raymond, unfortunately, um, I totally get it. Um, yeah, that's why I try to put as much as you can in the business page name so you don't have to necessarily rewrite or retype over stuff. Um, I think because of uh, character limitations, that's where the business page or the business or company that you're with should be in the beginning of every post. At least with your DRE license number and your name, you've at least not have to worry about retyping that information over and over again. All right. Um, by the way, boosted posts are really great. Uh, that's kind of the paid advertising thing. So when we go to post, we can boost it for a fee as well so that we can get people to see more eyes on that particular post um, to generate likes, views on our page, uh, which is a little bit different than the targeted advertising. By the way, post to your wall, uh, develop your content strategy. Your content strategy are four parts. Dedicate time, operate a, under a code of conduct, what you will and will not tolerate, basically. Track and adjust as you need it, and then, of course, stick with it. That's the hardest thing for a lot of people, sticking with what they're doing. Okay? Now, when you post, you got the targeted advertising and the boosted post. Both of these are fees. Targeted advertising, you're going to get more eyeballs on the information, and, of course, the boosted post, uh, which is nice. Now, where does that fall when it comes to Facebook? Well, when I do a targeted advertisement, as it shows here, a targeted advertisement always hits in the news feed. Basically, you develop the ad. It can be a picture. It can be a video with some information. And then, of course, the idea of the ad, what, who you want to hit, where you want to hit it at, and, of course, What's the point of the ad? Are you trying to get people to go to your business page to like it? Are you trying to get eyeballs on your website? Or are you trying to generate leads? Getting their information so that you can reach out and contact them. Now, usually an ad takes you about anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to make the ad. Whereas a boosted post doesn't have to cost you as much. Now, by the way, the targeted ad, I do believe you spend about 100 to $200. Maybe you say how long you want to run the ad, where, what regions, how many 
people you want to try to attempt to hit and what, again, the ad is supposed to do. Right here, we've got the Lexus ad. The, the targeted ad will always appear in the news feed. So here, get $50 off, book it now. I'm going to capture your information to reach out to you. Here they've got a picture, the company, and of course what they're what they're promoting. Now the boosted post, however, the boosted post. If I post something to my wall, maybe it's an update. Maybe hey, market update. You know this, that, and the other. I put a little um, thing about Orange County, about prices going up or down or whatever. I post it so that anybody who's liked my business page will see this post. But now I have a button that says po boost this post. Boosted post doesn't cost as much. I think you can still spend up to $100. It'll say, how long do you want that post to be boosted? A week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, to eat through that $100 budget. Okay. But now the post, instead of, and of course, all the boosted post does gets eyeballs on your business page. Entice, and all it does is entice people to like your business or go to your personal website. Which by the way, that's also found under your settings. There you can edit your page details. Not only do you create the page name, which I forgot to go over here real quickly, right? If I look real quickly, we've got information about my page under the about section. I can Indicate where I'm lo my business is located, basically my office, how to contact me, my website, my phone number, send me a direct message through Facebook or email me. Okay. When my hours of operation are. Most of us are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And of course, you can talk about your business a little bit. But back to the boosted post. The boosted post appears here to the right hand side of your Facebook business or of a person's Facebook personal page. This sponsored boosted post will sit there for that two week period. And depending on multiple businesses, this will rotate that out automatically. So if I wanted to go to 1-800-Flowers.com or postcards.com, you'll notice here that if I click on it, I'm going to be redirected back to their Facebook business page to like their business and to see their postings. But you'll notice here that they have not grabbed any information from me. This is strictly just to get likes to their page. This is where some scammers out there or some, I shouldn't say scammers necessarily, some businesses are making a fortune saying, I'll get you a thousand more likes. Well, guess what? You give them, you pay them the $1,800 a month and all they do is they go in, they take a post that you posted and boost it. So you're paying somebody $1,800 a month that you could do for $50 or $20 or $25 or even five. Save yourself that money, save yourself that time. So now, real quickly here, because I know we're also short on time, right? Because we haven't even touched YouTube yet. But real quickly, because I know I can go many more hours on Facebook, what do we do with the people that we like? Maybe we get people that are liking us because we see here, based on our insights, we've got two likes on my business page. What do I do with this information? Well, there's a way that I can use these likes and request them to be friends. Because I can see the people, there's a way for me to be able to see who's liked my business page. And from there, I can actually send them a friend request to like me or to be friends with me on my personal page. 
Now, I know some of us here today will go, well, geez, Tony, I don't want anybody to know me personally. Wait a minute. 62% of millennials went with a real estate agent that they found on their social media. Why? Because they got to know them personally. How do we get to know you personally? They need to be our friends. Now, when it comes to our friends, not every friend is a family member. Not every friend is a friend or every friend is a friend, but not every friend is a classmate. Not every friend is a client. Not every friend is a buyer or a seller. Did you know that you can actually create what they call lists? on your Facebook personal page to group your friends into these lists. So in a way, Facebook kind of gives you a contact management style system here to group people into groups. How do we do this? Well, when we start friending people or getting friends, what we're now going to do is we're going to put friends into lists. How we do that is that we're going to come back over here on our personal page, come back over to the left, and in our list or in our list of choices here, one of which should say lists. And it used to say lists. Doesn't say lists anymore. Great. So let's go and find our friends. Uh, where's our friends here? I love how Facebook changes this each and every month, it seems. Leo, am I just missing it? I'm staring at it as well. Do, 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 do. It was literally right here alphabetically, list. But now I guess it's put under the friends area. So let's see here. Ah, friends. There oh. we go. Underneath your name. Now here we've got a bunch of friends. Some people are requesting us, people that we can request, suggestions, this, that, and the other. But we got a list over here to the left that says custom lists. I click on the, my down arrow here, and we're going to see all the lists that I've created. Well, if I've never created a list, guess what? Come down below and create a list. So lists that you're going to create. Create a list for clients. Create a list for buyers. Create a list for sellers, leases, landlords, real estate agents, vendors, family, things like that. Create these multiple lists. So now, how do I put people into our lists? Back on our personal page, right above where it says friends, click on your name. Here under your name, we got several choices, one of which is your friends list. These are the people that we have actually friended. So now, what I'm going to do periodically, go through here, click on the three dots next to that friend. And now there's a choice here to edit their list. Now I can select what lists this friend needs to be in. You'll notice here that I can select multiple lists for my friend. So what I'm now going to do is go through my list of 500 friends and put them all into their appropriate lists. Now, what's cool about this? Why do I do this? Right? Well, not every friend needs to see certain posts, right? Like if I have a post that really my family members should know about, like maybe I had a death in the family, or maybe I want to give some condolences, or maybe I want to share something that's super personal, like, geez, I just was diagnosed with stage two cancer or something like that. Well, my clients don't necessarily need to see this necessarily. My vendors don't need to see it, but my family needs to see this. When I go to post something on my personal page, you're going to notice here that underneath my name immediately says who gets to see whatever I'm about to post. What I can now do is click on my down arrow and I can now say who gets to see it, my friends on my friends list, or maybe I now need to put it to a particular list, like my buyer list, my client list, my real estate list, my seller list. So now what I can do is control posting. So if I have something that I'm posting about maybe from my Facebook business page to my personal page, 
about loans going up or, or the interest rates going up. Well, who needs to know that? Does the seller need to know that or does my buyer list need to know that? I can now select the buyer po or list. And now when I say done, when I write or share that link about the interest rates or what or whatever, my friend list and my buyers who are in this list will only see this post. So in a way, I'm now controlling who gets to see what content. Now, how does this also work for me and my friends list? If I have friends in certain lists, what I can now do is either exclude them out or what have you. But back on my personal page, I can now indicate who I want to see postings from. There is a way here to be able to view, say, the client only list. Which now I can see what my clients are posting. Now I can post comment on their posts to show engagement. So in my five minutes a day going onto Facebook, excuse me, on going onto Facebook, I can now quickly and efficiently control my views. I don't have to spend an hour or two hours just posting. Are there any questions on this? Are there any questions on Facebook? All right, real quickly. Let's talk about YouTube. Let's create a YouTube page or channel. Super easy. We got two ways of doing it. We can originally go to YouTube.com and where it says sign in, we're going to click on that and then create a Gmail account. Now, real quickly, does anybody here have a Gmail account? Most of us. Good. We got a couple of hands. Excellent. Guess what? Google owns YouTube. So that means that Everybody who has a Gmail account automatically has at least a YouTube channel that you can post videos to automatically. Didn't have to do a thing, but we do need to customize it. Now, real quickly, how do we double check that? Well, if you're on Google Chrome like myself and I go to Google, you'll probably notice that right here, we got Google right in the middle of the screen over here towards the top left corner or right corner. We see that we've got my picture meaning that I'm already signed into my Gmail account, I can immediately jump to Gmail. But wait a minute, how do I get to YouTube? Well, I could type in YouTube.com at the very top, but I want to access this quickly and efficiently. And by the way, being a Gmail user, I have access to other things too. If you look here in Google Chrome, next to where it says Gmail and images, there are nine little fun little dots. Now these nine little dots, if I click on this, now give me all these free software available that's offered to every Gmail Google user. I can access a Google search. I can access Google Maps, the Google Play Store, Google News, Gmail, Google Meets, Chat, Contacts, Google Drive, Photos, even Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So Google has its own document editing software. So Docs is basically like Microsoft Word or Apple Pages. Sheets are like Microsoft Excel or Apple Numbers. And Slides is basically Microsoft PowerPoint or uh, Apple Keynote. So we have access to those materials. And again, this is all free. Now we got something super cool here real quickly, YouTube. I can click on YouTube and now immediately I'm taken to my YouTube. And we see here that in the top right corner, I'm already logged in to my YouTube page. Here I I can access videos, start writing up or looking for videos, how to's, this, that, and the other. So Simply, to access my channel, come over back to the top right corner. Right here on YouTube, I'm going to click my image, or in this case, if you don't have one, click on your initials, which is based on your account. From here, we get a list of choices, one of which says, go to your channel. 
Now, right away, we get to see some channel information. Okay, so I need to now customize my channel before I upload any videos. When I go to customize channel, a couple of things that we're going to do right away. Under the layout, we get to immediately see the layout, but we're now immediately going to go to the branding. Here, we're going to upload a profile picture of ourselves. Again, keeping consistent in our branding about who we are. Upload your personal picture. Number two, you have that banner in the background. Now, unlike Facebook business page where I can title my YouTube channel, right now my YouTube channel has just got my name. So I want immediate identifiers. If someone Google searches me and they see that I have a YouTube channel, when they go to it, I want them to immediately identify who I am, what company I'm with, and of course, my first point of contact information. DRE license number, phone number, email address, so on and so forth. Here, upload that image. Now that image can't be larger than six megabytes and it must meet the dimensions of 2,048 pixels by 1,152 pixels. So it's gonna be long, but short. Maybe you sit down with a graphics designer and modify your business card a little bit to meet those dimensions. Click on change, there, upload the image for your background. Now, anybody here have their own personal logo? Unfortunately, I have to leave. Gotcha, Leo. Thanks. So, maybe some of you here have your own personal branding. Well, what you can now do is watermark all your videos. Even though maybe I'm doing videos and I'm with Jack and Jill Real Estate, I've got my own personal logo that I want on my copyright protected material. Like I give a market update, I talk about a client, I talk about a situation, I do a video about it. I want my videos protected. I made my own brand. Well, here down below, under watermark video, I can upload my own personal branding. Now I can make that branding start be in the beginning only or at the end of my video, but I would suggest make it throughout the entire video. That way it's in the bottom left corner or right corner of every video. Simply click on change, upload that picture, excuse me, of your personal branding, and then it will be here. So now you don't have to do anything special in your video editing to always add your own personal logo. Now, once you've done this, your basic information, write a description about who you are, what you do in the business. Now, unlike your Facebook business page where you're limited to 255 characters, here you're unlimited. What I would suggest, make sure that you put in something unique that you do. Stand out from other agents who say, I love buying and selling real estates for first time home buyers, resellers. I work in Orange County, LA County, Riverside County to buy, sell, lease properties in the state of California, right? Gets really super boring. When you're given an opportunity to write a unique description about who you are in your unique business, talk about the areas that you're marketing. What's unique about the areas that you're marketing in? Like, Geez, if you're ever interested in knowing where the best pizza restaurant is because you live in Newport, it's Z, Z's Pizza. Or maybe it's Mazza's. Right? But for best shopping, it's South Coast Plaza, Plaza in Costa Mesa. If you want to know what properties are in or around these areas that you like to shop or eat, hit me up. I would love to work with you. Make that information stand out. Now, also underneath this basic information, you have your channel URL, meaning this is your YouTube channel URL. Great for your personal website. Great for putting it on certain other websites that ask you, 
do you have a YouTube channel? This is your YouTube channel URL. Copy it, paste it where it needs to go. Maybe you have little logos at your at your email or in your email signature that can be embedded with a hyperlink to direct them back into your channels. This is a way you do that. Now, with these two things modified, we've got some other things here. Off to the left, we're going to now go to the settings. Under the settings, we're going to modify a couple of things. Number one, under the channel, we're going to look, type in some keywords. How my channel can be found on either YouTube or Google search. Now, I know some of us spend money on Facebook, uh, Facebook AdWords. Or I'm sorry, not Facebook, Google AdWords. Right? Costs you a lot of money to spend if a word is ever put into a search for hopefully your website or your name to come up on the top of the list. But wait, Tony, I don't see where I need to pay for this. You're right. Here in YouTube, all I need to do is click in the box, get my cursor to blink, and type in the word that I want as a keyword. So here, I'm going to say, put in all the necessary keywords. I can have up to 500 keywords for someone to find my YouTube channel. Type in words like real estate, training, California, my name, Orange County, LA County, Riverside County, wherever I'm marketing. Type in those inf that information. So that way, if somebody types in a Google search, my channel is going to be elevated to the top of the list. Now, by the way, anybody here have a name or a last name that people either constantly mispronounce or misspell? I'm going to help you out here with a little cheat. Do I have anybody like that? Probably a couple of you. Well, guess what? In the keyword search, misspell your name purposely. Like here, my name is actually spelled, or my last name, which is constantly misspelled or mispronounced. Officially, my last name is pronounced Breed. B-R-I, E is an elephant, D is in dog. But I have, through the years, have had people call me Bride, Breeden, Brode, Barden. Right? I don't know where you get B-A-R from, but Barden. Well, I learned this very quickly to misspell my name. So, when I first started my YouTube channel, I just had Anthony Breed and Tony Breed. It was great. I could share it with agents to go to my YouTube channel to look at our training videos that I was making. And then one year, back in 2018, or I'm sorry, 2017, I gave out my, said, this is how you find my channel, gave them my name, an agent during class said, hey, Tony, do you deal with weddings? And I said, what do you mean? Well, I see a bunch of wedding channels here and a wedding videos, but I don't, you know, when I type in your name. Well, when I looked at it, I went, wow, you spelled my name correctly, but these wedding videos or bride videos kept coming up. And then I realized, that's because they misspelled the word bride, B-R-I-D-E. So I said, geez, I'm going to do that because I've had people mispronounce and misspell my name. So I purposely now put in my keywords all the misspellings of my last name, B-R-E-E-D, B-R-I-D-E, B-R-E-I-D, -E things like that. And now when I give people my channel name, Tony Breed, now I come back to the top of the list because I'm easily found now. So if you have a last name that's constantly, or a first name that's constantly misspelled or mispronounced, put in all those misspellings and mispronunciations of your name. That way, you almost guarantee yourself to always at least be in the list near the top to be found. So that's under your keyword search for your basic information to find your channel. Next, under your advanced settings, here under your channel, 
anytime you upload a video, are your videos strictly for for children or not for children? Or do you want to set that manually anytime you upload a video? I recommend I want to review this setting anytime I upload a video. Because not every video is meant for people over the age of 21. Maybe some of my videos are meant for people under the age of 21. Right? I want to be able to be flexible in that. Okay? Automatic captions do not show potentially inappropriate words. Make sure that's set up because YouTube does automatically add subtype or subtitles to some of your videos if you enable that. Okay? You can display subscriber count, which I don't mind. I want to display that because I want to show people that people do go to my channel. Okay? And you want to do the same. Do you want to disable interspace ads? Yes, you do. Unless you're monetizing your channel, which we're not going to be there just yet. And as a matter of fact, why inundate somebody with a ton of commercials? Disable that. Okay? Next, your upload defaults. There are some uploads, or when we upload a video, we want some default here. So Raymond, this is going to help you out. Remember how you were saying you want some things pre-typed for yourself so you don't have to type it over and over again? Here on your YouTube videos, have an upload default, like Tony Breed Presents, or in this case, uh, Raymond Denton, DRE license number, right? If you wanted to, as the title presents. I would just put maybe the Denton group, if you're a group leader, okay? But here maybe, you know, OC Realtors, or I'm sorry, Tech Tony presents. And then I'm going to leave it blank because every video will have its own unique title. But no matter what, I always begin my title with this. Down below, under the description. Yes, we want to leave enough room to describe the video when we upload the video, but there's some things that I don't want to have to type over and over again. So, what I always begin my videos with, right, in my description. Training videos for real estate agents to use their tools to make the real estate business easier. And I'm going to leave it blank. But now I'm going to add in some other things like for more information and videos, subscribe to my channel. So a call to action, how to contact me, call me at 949-555-5555, email me at Tony at ocrealtors.org. And of course, more importantly, because I'm a real estate agent, indicate that you're a realtor, your GRE license number, and of course, the company that you're with. First point of contact. Yes. Should it be in the video? Of course. But now I'm also putting it in the description. Here, I've typed in 283 characters of information, and I've still got more than 4,000 characters left to describe my own videos when I upload them. Now, when it comes to finding the actual individual videos, who gets to see it? The public. Leave it at that. Next tag words or keywords so in our channel we had keywords to find us oops we have a couple of things here uh real quickly sorry about this i'm going to get my dbas authorized via home smart so i can use them instead of my name okay that's great nobody looks for me but everybody looks for the the name of my farms awesome that's fine uh raymond and of course, if you want to do that for your branding, sure. Consistency of branding, I, I, I'm totally fine with that. Totally fine with that. If HomeSmart's fine with it and you do the pro appropriate things to get it as a registered DBA, awesome. Still make sure that your license number is attached to it. Okay? So that way, again, you meet first point of contact. Um, here, tag words. Add in some of your tag words. You can have up to 500 tag words for each video. What am I going to put in here? Some of the keywords that I put on to find my channel. Well, 
not only do I want people to find the channel, but I also want them to find individual videos. So my name, my company, my um, counties that I work in. So California, Orange County, LA County, Riverside County. Mostly what my videos pertain to, technology, how-tos, 10-minute learning, OC Realtors, OC Realtors, all the different versions of our acronyms, this, that, and the other. Put in some basic things, but leave enough room to start putting in what I want specific videos to be found at. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So here under my upload defaults, put in some tag words that will be automatically typed that I don't have to type things in from scratch. Put in my a bit, some description words that I don't want to have to type over and over again, as well as some, t some of the title. Save the information. Under your advanced settings, you can change this, but mostly importantly, under your comments, hold inappropriate comments for your review. Again, stop those trollers from writing really nasty comments and nasty words just because they love doing stuff like that. I want to control what gets seen. So I am notified by YouTube anytime somebody writes a comment on a video. Now I can review it. If it's something bad, like their curse words and inappropriate language, I can now immediately delete that comment and not have it posted. So make sure under your comments, under your advanced settings, under your upload defaults, that you enable hold potential inappropriate comments for your review. And by the way, you can in in increase how strict you are on the language that should not be used. Again, shows a level of professionalism by you. You can also show how many views have happened on the video, turn that on, because that's important for people to see, as well as yourself. Now, with at least those two things, along with your general information done, we are now ready to upload a video. So, does uploading a video have to be difficult? Absolutely not. All we need to do, go back into YouTube. When we are logged into our YouTube, account we go over we go to our channel from our channel we're going to see here that in the upper right hand corner we've got a little camera icon with a plus sign we see that it's called create when i click on that create button we can now upload a video or go live now i will tell you that youtube live has been around three years longer than facebook live as a matter of fact the only reason why Facebook Live is more popular than YouTube Live is that Facebook put money into advertising that tool, and YouTube didn't. It amazes me how many beautiful tools Google has to offer to you through all of its products that they don't advertise. They trust that you as a user will eventually find it. So just know that you could go live even using YouTube. But maybe you made the video, right? Maybe I took it with my phone device and now I save it to my computer. I do some editing, I add some stuff to it, but now I now need to upload it. Or I recorded the video on my phone and now what I can do is go to my YouTube channel on my phone device and say, upload the video. Now from here on a computer device, whether it's PC or Mac, I now have a window here that says, says drag and drop the video. So now what I can do is I can browse my computer for that video. And let me see here if I can find one super quickly. My Zoom class. And now I can grab that video, drag it, and let go. Which now a copy is now being uploaded to YouTube. Now, during the upload process, we now need to put in the specifics for this video, like the title. We see here that it begins with Tony Presents or Tech Tony Presents, and now all I need to do is put in the 
rest of the title. So maybe this is the virtual tour video. So um, one, two, three, four, Main Street virtual tour. As an example. From here, we're going to come down to the description. Again, some description is already here, like my call to action, my information, this, that, and the other. But more importantly, click in the box and start to type. Welcome to 1234 Main Street in Irvine, California. This beautiful three bedroom, two bathroom home at the end of cul de sac. Both. Amazing views. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever you need. Right? Again, you've got about 5,000 characters to write a great description. But you'll notice here that I did not have to rewrite or I won't need to rewrite my name, my DRE license number, my company, my phone number, my email address, whatever I need people to do. Down below, I can select a cover image, pull from the video, maybe my starter logo of the video or what have you. Down below here, the audience, is it made for kids or is it not made for kids? I can say yes or no. I can even put in even more stricter age restrictions. Yes, restrict the video for viewers over the age of 18 or do not restrict viewers over the age of 18. If I say yes, that means that it's 21 or older. Down below here, the tag words. Now, based on my upload defaults, I already have those, some of the tag words typed in, but now I need to type in other tag words for this particular video to be found. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click in the box, get my cursor to blink, and now I'm going to type in some of the specifics, like on how this video could be found, like um, virtual tour, 1234 Main Street, tab. Now it's a set of keywords. Maybe my next keywords. Irvine home for sale. Tab. Next. Three bedroom. Two bath. Home. Cul-de-sac. Right? Put in all these other potential words that if somebody were to do a Google search or be on YouTube and do a search. If they type these words or phrases or what have you, my video now gets elevated and found above everybody else's that do not have these keywords. So point out all the things that you need somebody who in a search are looking for. Maybe they're looking for a home in Irvine. Maybe they're looking for a three bedroom, two bath for sale. Maybe they're looking for a for sale property in the cul-de-sac. Maybe they're looking for a remodeled kitchen. My video is now going to be able to be found. Okay? Or this particular video will be able to be found. Now, once I, once I type that, okay, we go to the bottom left corner or right corner, click next. Here is going to look for the video elements. I can add in subtitles if I need to, to the actual video. I can add an end screen, meaning a call to action, like subscribe to my channel or make a suggestion of a next video in my video channel for someone to play and watch. We probably, we probably see that nowadays with some videos. People will go about two extra minutes longer, but in those last two minutes, little windows pop up of another video that that person made for you to now check, uh, select and watch. Do that. Next, the system checks to see if you're in copyright violations. So make sure that if you're using music, it's copyright or it's not copyright restricted. So don't use any pre-recorded songs. Even though you might have bought the album, 
that does not give you the rights to use that music for monetary value. And by the way, monetary value, I'm selling a property, I'm gaining, I, I earn money for selling that house. So I'm not paying royalty rights for that song. Buying that album, that's for my personal use and my personal use only. So don't use commercially recorded music unless you made it yourself. Then you have a copyright against you. <laughs> All right. After it checks and it says, hey, no issues are found, we just say next. At which point we can now say, who gets to see this video? The public? It's unlisted, meaning I can share the video, but nobody else can find the video. Or it's totally private and that they actually have to receive a personal share from me of this link or of this video for them to view it. 90% of the time, you want your videos to be found by the public. Now, maybe it's not ready for public just, or I can hit publish right now, but wait a minute. Oh, and by the way, off here to the right, this is the link to the video that I, again, I can share and post and get out there to the world for them to see. So maybe I post it in the uh, syndicated uh, video section of my listing. I put it on my personal website. I put that video on my Facebook business page. We can do that. Uh, real quickly, can we put a video slideshow of a listing created by a photographer? Unfortunately, Kathleen, not because that photographer has copyright on the photos and that video that they created. Usually when they create the video, they've already uploaded it to their channel and it doesn't have your branding on it. Now, depending on the rights that you have to the pictures, there, is t there are tons of software out there that if you own the copyright to the pictures yourself, you could actually literally put a slideshow virtual tour of a home together in less than two minutes. Like iMovie or WeVideo or uh, Movie Maker. Quickly and easily. All you got to do, pick out the pictures, add in some duty-free music, and then upload it to your YouTube channel. So it's really, really easy to do. And again, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Did that answer your question? Don't use the photographer's videos uh, because those are usually copyrighted and they're already on um, a link anyway, unless they give you the full on video file, which is an MP4 file. And again, if you own the rights to that, then you could upload it that way. But you've got to make sure that you own the rights to do that. If you don't, then yeah, there's no way for you to do it other than owning the rights to the photos. Does that help? Now, uh, one thing that we were talking about consistency. You should do at least a video a week if you can. Now, in our next class at 3 o'clock today, um, I don't expect anybody to do that right away. Right? That's something that you should build up to. But if you do a video a month, great. But maybe you're going on vacation next week when you regularly post a video well geez what do i do because i've posted the you know i got the video done and ready to go right now do i miss out on my week and be a week late no instead what you could do is schedule that video posting so yes i made the video today but it's not ready to go today i wanted to go out next week while i'm on vacation because that's our regular regularly scheduled time to post a video. So all I now need to do is come down below and hit schedule. And now I can pick out what date at what time of the day this video gets promoted to the public. So maybe you're about to go on vacation and you made three videos. Well, instead of uploading all three videos right away, we can now stagger and schedule those three videos to go out when they're supposed to go out. One to go out today, immediately published. The other two are going to be put on a schedule, maybe a week or two apart. 
And now when I hit schedule, the video will be scheduled to go out on, oh, I don't know, July 28th at 12 a.m. Or I go to save and publish and the moment and set it to public. And the moment I hit publish, this video is now ready to be found by anyone in the world right away. This process usually takes anywhere from five to eight minutes to do, depending on how long the video is. Typically, your videos are about one to two minutes long on average. Depending on the video, one to two minutes. Virtual tours should be about a minute. Are there any questions on this? All right, um, real quickly, um, when it comes to video, let's close that out. There we go. When you post a video, periodically you got to track it, track the analytics. Analytics are super important. Okay, here over a 30 day period, how many? Uh, how many views you got on your various different videos? This does take time. If you only do one video, don't expect a lot of views right away. Okay. It usually takes us a little while. Like it took me about six months before I actually started to see views on a regular basis. Okay. Um, you have to put out videos consistently. But here we get to see some analytics. Now, analytics are great because we actually get to monitor how well our videos are doing as well as how well our channel is doing for us to promote, right? Here we see that my videos have, in total, have gotten more than 1,142 views in the last 28 days. In that time, people have watched about 98.7 hours of my videos, okay? I've gotten six subscribers this past month, okay? Down below, I can just see which video is doing the best. Funny enough, this video that I made almost five years ago has gotten more than 273 views still to this day on zip forms. Now, I will tell you that I've made more recent zip forms videos, and for some reason, this particular one five years ago still is my big winner, still consistently. And I put in the exact same information on how my other Zipforms videos are to be found, this one still is always the big hit. But here we get to see, on average, out of this one hour long video, people are watching about seven minutes of this video. So they're watching little tidbits of data. Uh, Raymond, when I look at your course three years ago, you recommend a gimbal to avoid shaking when using a phone for video. Do the newer phones handle shaking okay without a gimbal? Um, they handle a little bit better, uh, Raymond, but the motorized gimbal is still always better because it will really steady that camera. Some of us still have that shaking hand or what have you. The gimbal or some sort of uh, device like a uh, selfie stick is always better. Yeah. So um, if you want to spend the extra $100 to do that or spend two or three dollars to get a uh, selfie stick to make your video, I, I highly recommend it. Any way to keep that, that camera steady is always advisable, for sure. Um, let's see here. So here we get to see our videos, how well they're doing. The content, here are 49 views, 222 impressions, click-through rate, I don't even advertise any of my videos. I just promote it to my agents. Here, externally, how it's found, suggested videos, this, that, and the other, how they're being viewed. My audience is great. I got 39 viewers coming always back, 895 unique viewers, so people find them. Age, gender, under my research, we can do all this. So, in a way, we now become like a mini TV station, right? Because 
knowing which videos are getting the most views, we now all of a sudden start to do more videos like this. Which is totally important. And again, as you grow in your content, right? Here, wow, miraculously, I have 707 subscribers to my channel. And I only started my channel, gosh, back in 2016, 2017. So it does take time. And I don't spend any time trying to promote it. This is organic by you, the agents. Okay? The effort that you guys will put in, you'll see far better returns. More subscribers, more views, more information that people can find you at. Can you see the name of your subscribers? The answer is yes, right here. When I subs when someone newly subscribes or comments, we get to see who they are. So here we get to see um, my subscriber list. Where is that? Ah, recent subscribers. So here in the past 90 days, one, two, three subscribers. But when I say see all, and maybe I go for the entire lifetime. Here's everybody that has ever subscribed to my channel. And I just go by page, by page, by page. Right? We just scroll right through those pages. And a lot of times, I will go to their channels to see what they're doing. And if there are videos that I like, I'll subscribe to theirs. So in a way, one hand washes the other. So agents, don't be afraid to subscribe to each other's channel. Right? It's like, geez, I like your, your postcard. I'd love to do a postcard for my for my farm that does that says exactly this. Right? Don't be afraid to share that. Here we've got this person, Abby, who happens to be have 14 subscribers of their own. So Yes, you can see all these subscribers. We can even reach out to these subscribers and request them to be friends on Facebook. Another way of getting clientele. Are there any questions on any of this? Or any other further questions? Well, if there are no other questions, I want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to call me or contact me. My phone number is 949-586-6800. My extension is 104. My email address is Tony, T-O-N-Y, at ocrealtors.org. And the only thing I ask, do some work. Give yourself an opportunity to make your Facebook business page. Make your YouTube channel. Make sure it's compliant with DRE regulations. You know, give yourself, you know, some call to action. Like, did you do your background image? Did you write your about your section? Did you set it up correctly? Did you request likes? Post a video. One video that I, I feel that most agents do not have that people want to see, do an about you video. If people don't like to read, guess what? Do a video about yourself. Maybe you sit down, you turn your phone on, you look at the phone. By the way, if you do do this by your phone, always have your phone about maybe a couple of inches just above eye line or above your nose line. If you have it below, guess what? They're seeing underneath your nose. Nobody wants to see what's what's under your nose or in your nose. Have it either at eye level or just above eye. And then look at your camera. Don't look at your screen. Look at your camera. Now, instead of holding your phone lengthwise, hold it, hold it horizontally, where the bottom of your phone is to the um, right of the screen. That way, the video is taken upright. And then talk 30 seconds about who you are. Hi, my name is Anthony Breed. I work at Orange uh, at uh, Jack and Jill Real Estate. Just want to introduce myself to the potential clients out there in the world. 
I've been in the business for 20 years. I buy and sell properties for people, which every realtor does, right? But here, I specifically work in certain areas like the Seacrest here located in Huntington Beach. Why Seacrest? Seacrest is a beautiful community. And the amenities in and around the area are great for any home buyer or seller. Things like the shopping and this, that, and the other. Show a little bit of that. And if you're ever interested in wanting to buy or sell in Orange County or L.A. County or Riverside County, reach out to me and then say what, how to, somebody can get in touch with you. Phone number, email address. Go to my website. Subscribe to my channel for the latest in videos that I'm going to upload. And then upload it after you're done. Now, I know everybody here says, I don't like the way I look on camera and I don't like the way I sound. This is how people see you today. Don't be afraid of that. This is how people hear you today over the phone. Don't be afraid of it. Would you not show a property to a client just because of the way you look or the way you sound? The answer is no. So why would you be afraid of video? Don't be. Yes. Does it take work? A little bit. Everybody will do this the very first time. You'll stare at the camera, you won't blink, and you won't breathe for 30 seconds. That's because you're just now doing it. But as you do it more and more and more, the more relaxed you get. Smile. Right? Welcome people. Before you know it, by your 20th video or your 100th video, you're going to be relaxed. You're going to be laughing. You're going to be able to talk to people. Guess what? This is not an audience, it's a person. When you're doing your video, think that you're talking to a person individually. Right? You're talking to that buyer or a potential seller to talk to them specifically. That's going to help you relax. We're at open houses. Anybody here nervous at open houses? Maybe a couple of times? But as you do it more and more, you become more relaxed. Video is no different. Okay. All right. I know I went over by 15 minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Raymond. I really appreciate that. I hope you all have a great and wonderful day. I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys later this afternoon when we talk about the game plan for consistency and idea content to be consistent on Facebook as well as YouTube, which can be applied to almost any social media platform, by the way. But I look forward to seeing you all then. If I don't see you, good luck in creating your channel and beginning this wonderful world of social media.